I read the story where there was a photographer at the beginning part of your book, and he was um, observing someone using the uh, camera incorrectly, or right. what he deemed to be incorrectly, and uh, the person that happened to have a developmental difference said, well, if you actually turn it around, you can have, it acts, acts as a telescope, right? right? Um, and so he had found a different way to use it, so he came with this different perspective, right. and the photographer well, you wrote the book, so <laughs> the photographer learned something yeah. and uh, it realized that he had come with, you know, sort of a superior mentality, like right. I'm smarter right. than them, and realized that there was a different way of looking at things. Right. Um, and so, you know, even in the dis my, my dissertation when I wrote it, it there's a, a phrase called authentic reciprocity. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, you know, in a reciprocal arrangement, I give to you, you give to me, there's some sort of equal, you know, exchange. Right. Right. But that with someone with intellectual disability or, or difference, because I, I don't even like the word disability, that uh, the very presence of them being um, gives something back mm -hmm. to you. And, right. and I know that for me, that's very true with, you know, having a son that has um, IDD. So mm -hmm. I guess my, my question to you is, uh, talk more, you, you alluded to this earlier, but talk, it, tell me more about um, what we learn from people with intellectual disability. What, what do we gain from that? Because I think that when m many people look at things like the Special Olympics as I'm going to help and volunteer with the Special Olympics, mm -hmm. or um, even with my son going to school, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for us to help him. And um, I'm coming from the angle of my son can help the students here develop more compassion, mm -hmm. et cetera. So can you can you elaborate more on what we learn from people that have that that difference? Well, I think the first message is there is no us and them. Right. There is only us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the fundamental message of all religions. It, it's the fundamental uh, truth that lies at the heart, in my view, of the human soul. Uh, there is no us and them. Uh, we have constructed a world in which we put a lot of people into categories and we use those categories to exclude people. We use categories to push them either out of our circle or to invite them in and those models uh, invariably carry with them enormous pain both for the excluder and for the excluded. Um, the Special Olympics world view, uh, and you can't write this down, you have to experience it, and most people who do experience it come away, I believe, understanding it, is that we end us and them. Uh, you can cross into a gym, um, really just open that steel door and walk into a gym where uh, a Special Olympics event is taking place and you can almost feel it. It's almost as though it, in the biblical sense you were surrounded by or open to a light or a, a wind that blows differently. There is no judgment uh, in this world. There is challenge, there is hope, there is delight, there is competition, but there's no judgment. Uh, there is no excluding. Uh, there is no finger pointing. There is no blame. There is no pity. Uh, we aim to build moments uh, that can act as light to the culture. We do this by focusing on a particular population, so we almost uh, have to compromise with the world in order to change it. Mm -hmm. We have to say intellectual difference. I like the word diff-ability um, because I think it invites us to recognize the universality of ability and the universality of difference. Uh, anything that begins with dis is already you're fighting a, an uphill battle. So I, like you, don't, don't like the word disability, but I mean it is the, the language that allows people to understand what I'm talking about. Um, but our, uh, our view is that there is no us and them, that everyone learns from everyone. The rich from the poor, the weak from the strong, the dark from the light, uh, the powerful from the powerless, uh, the wealthy from the poor. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Um, the fundamental challenge of humanity, in my view, is to end all those divisions and recognize in each person uh, the incalculable, unimaginably perfect gift. Um, so uh, we have to fight a little bit our way through that to say, oh yes, your son has gifts. You know, don't just see him as a source of pity or charity or compassion or volunteerism. All those things, all those ideas, service even, they were all, if you go back to the roots of the ideas of service or compassion, if you go back to the prophetic literature or uh, the gospel literature, I believe they are fundamentally 
invitations not to exchange of goods and services. It's not I have money, therefore, and you don't, I give it to you because I'm happy and you're not, or I'm rich and you're poor. The actual underlying invitation of those ancient texts was to healing, was to bridging the gap, was to closing the chasm that separates one person from the other. It, from broadening the circle, you go to the places where people are excluded in order to remind you that no one is excluded. Uh, we have kind of distorted that into a charitable model where it's about money or me giving to you because you're homeless or poor or whatever, uh, disabled. These are all words that create separation, actually sometimes. The marginalized, I mean, those yeah, are all words. Yeah, but charitable right? work can often uh, un unknowingly, in my view, contribute to the gap between people rather than healing it. Uh, so, uh, what are the gifts uh, that persons with intellectual or developmental differences bring to schools? Uh, I mean, I can start to list them, but I could go on for the next hour because they're the gifts of every human being. Openness, trust, willingness to learn, friendship, compassion, uh, intelligence, wit, wisdom, uh, uh, the capacity to slow down, take a look, focus on relationships more than power. Um, a willingness to trust, uh, be uh, uh, available, uh, uh, be undeterred uh, by distraction sometimes. But these are gifts that um, sometimes a person with Down syndrome might have, sometimes a person with autism or Williams syndrome or Prada William. You know, we have a thousand syndromes yeah. uh, now, and they're all, they're all sort of got their little typologies and so on. Uh, we are naming more and more disabilities. Uh, I don't think. Um, it's necessarily a fruitful exercise. Maybe medically it helps, but uh, the real fruit is to recognize that there are thousands and millions of uh, abilities, and there are no disabilities. There are different abilities, and there are different vulnerabilities. Who doesn't have them? I'd like to see someone raise their hand. Uh, we all have them. Uh, we are all broken in some ways. We are all wounded. We are all fearful. We are all hurt. Um, and we all struggle with all that. Um, uh, it's time we uh, unmasked uh, the strong and the weak and recognize that we are all strong to the extent that we are open. And that's the only gift worth having. <laughs>